let's go back. You, you started out with, uh, you know, kind of the weather coming in from the West and uh, the trends and social things that start happening. You talked about students and schools kind of seemingly being used as uh, experiment experimental uh, laboratories, policies and various things that have followed that. You talked about, you know, kid not comfortable in a particular bathroom, and that certainly has escalated in the last uh, few years. And a lot of parents are rightly so very concerned. Uh, kids are concerned. And it's just there's so much chaos and confusion over these matters. Let's back up just a little bit. So, I mean, there's several factors here. One is, you know, there there's agenda that's driving this apparently because, I mean, this stuff doesn't just evolve. I mean, it, these things happen because there are people behind them that are pushing those things. Um, and a lot of times it happens without parents being really aware and all of a yeah. sudden it all kind of tumbles down and the parents are feeling the effect of the legislature being felt feeling effect of pressure from groups to pass certain laws and so forth. So let, let's go back there a little bit. And I mean, now that we are where we are, We've got, you know, and I think you you kind of summed it up well. We've got this adversarial uh, thing going on. It's kind of like us against them, where we are, we should all be as one team, but we don't feel like we're one team because we've got different currents going on, and people, yes. you know, everybody. When there's a problem, what's the human nature? That's we got to right. have somebody to blame, yes. right? Well, usually there's a lot of blame to go around, but but let's dig in there a little bit because here's here's what parents and educators, everybody's looking for. They're wanting solutions. So, you know, how can we understand this more? And what kind of positive actions can we as individuals as well as communities take to to right some of these things very wow yeah that is a lot uh, mr adams <laughs> that is a lot so I, I would say um first of all that I, I think yes there is an agenda and these things are driven um and i think politics is is a big influence in this it is the the largest arm military education in our country of of budget of resources um, and I think let there me, are. Let me, let me let me pause for just a second here because you use the word politics, and so when we use the word politics, that means a lot of different things to different people. And it does. typically, people think, okay, it's the the elected officials or whatever. I'm of the opinion that politics always follows culture. It's a, it's a reaction. So whatever's going on, politics is usually you know kind of gets in you know step two, step three, step four somewhere um, Absolutely. in a sense. Uh, but when you use the word politics there, uh, how are you using it? I, I, you nailed it. I, I think culturally things are shifting and things are happening. I think ultimately the external force, if I'm going to use my faith, would be Satan and evil forces, um, the God of this world. Um, and I think that culturally, as these issues start to come up and we start to get away from things that we used to hold valuable in halls of education all the way up to the 50s and 60s, um, like the Bible, like prayer, like the Ten Commandments, these things that we pushed out. Culturally, we had to replace those things. And I think legislation was put into place to replace those things with other things. That was the the basically the crux of, of what I was trying okay. to get at. We, we have this issue of households aren't going to, I mean, if you look at the statistics, um, foundationally a belief in God in our country. They're lower than they've ever been, but they're still very high. Um, you're talking 70 plus percent of households in America believe there's a God and faith is important to them. How right. that fleshes out practically, we could argue statistically all day long, but nevertheless, seven out of 10 households, faith is important. God is important. Um, so a lot of these things that we're dealing with in the halls of education, we're not dealing with at home. They're settled things in our house. We're not going to accept things that we don't want that go against our beliefs and our worldview. So I think the classroom has become that sort of fishing in a bucket kind 
kind of philosophy. Our, their kids are there, taxpayer funded. We can teach. We can do whatever we want. You as a parent don't really. It, there's a better chance of, of accepting it um, and getting that agenda through in the school with the children than ever we could in the household. Um, so let me ask let me ask you this question because you just hit on a on a really key point uh, about kids kind of being captive there you know yes. in the bucket uh, and we can teach whatever we want so are you saying then because I think people hear different things so let's clarify yeah. um, are you talking about the folk who are driving agenda or are you talking about the average teacher? No, uh, the folks that, that, that are driving the agenda, right? The, the, those things that are coming through the Department of Education, those things that the curriculum makers, the policy um, the creators, those those are the ones. The average teacher, I mean, that's that's where I land. I mean, I was yeah. never an administrator. Um, I was on a school board, but I was never in a classroom uh, or over a classroom in charge of the classroom. I was just that average teacher with a classroom. And you, you honestly, you you are so limited and confined to what you can teach, what you can say, how you can do it. Your methodologies are driven by policy, uh, enforced by your administrator, central office, school board. So no, there there's I don't think there's really much responsibility um, for the the bad things that are happening in the halls of education that can be placed in the laps of the teachers or even the administrators of the local school for that matter. I think it's central office. Uh, local school board, state department of education, and then of course the department of education in Washington. Um, I think that that's the key to to where all of these changes has ha has happened. Um, again, but I, I think it's a, more external forces than boots on the ground um, in the classroom, um, if you will. So okay. I think that's why we're seeing homeschool increase, population increase, private school uh, are are increasing. I think people are those households that are seventy percent plus. Um, that are seeing things happen and, and their kids being taught things that they don't want being taught, uh, whether it's socially or academically, whether it's something of, of evolution or um, whether it's it's this, you know, embrace the whatever societal things that um, that the culture is wanting us to embrace. And I think parents are saying we've had enough. And and listen, when somebody decides to take their child out of a public school, which is occurring at an exponential rate in our country, that is a huge financial strain and sacrifice because they're still paying for that public school tuition. Now they're paying for private school or for uh, to, to homeschool, which usually means somebody is stepping away from a full-time or part-time job. So mm -hmm. that's a huge, uh, our, our, our country is, our households, our, our parents are communicating something very big um, right now by those actions. Do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? You know, I, I think choice when it comes to education is a great thing. Uh, I think competition is a great thing. I love public schools. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the only place I've ever taught. My wife has taught both private and public. She's currently an administrator in public, you know, start as a business teacher, special ed teacher, special education coordinator, um, uh, ass assistant principal. Uh, we love the public school system. Um, you know, there's a lot of positive things. And I, unfortunately, I think if there's a mass exodus and a withdrawal uh, of, of all of the great educators that we have leaving public school and, and flocking to private school or, or, or other options, I, I, I think that that's scary. But I think that money um, would put a lot of checks and balances. Competition would put a lot of checks and balances and a thing called accountability. Um, if educators realize, wow, okay, you know, there are other options here. We need to get back where we need to get back to.